My name's Keith Rucker. Um, I'm out at the museum today. Uh, it's, it's right before Christmas and I've, I've got some vacation time at work that I'm needing to use up before the end of the year. So uh, I'm gonna be off of work a good bit between now and the first of the year. And, and today I've come out to the museum and working on a couple of projects that I've been, uh, had going on for a while. And I'm getting ready to, uh, to bore, uh, this is a bearing block. I'm needing to bore this out and press in a new bronze bushing on it. And I've got it mounted up in the four jaw chuck and I was getting ready to start indicating on the inside of the, the old bore in here to get it lined up. And I was really excited. I was gonna use my brand new Noga indicator base. And uh, if you remember, uh, I did a video or if you saw I did a video over the weekend just a couple of days ago where I talked about this Noga indicator base and I hadn't had a chance to use it yet. Well, when I came out here today, I immediately recognized a problem but also saw a solution. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this and we'll go through it. So here's the issue I have with the, the Noga indicator. Um, the way you mount this in here is there's a 3 8 hole and that's made to fit right onto the barrel of your indicator. So you slide that in there and uh, it just tightens down on there and uh, presto, you got it all together. So here's my problem is that um, I'm getting ready to do this, this indicating job and I want to use my hole attachment to reach up inside of a, a bore that's already in the part so that I can indicate off that inside part. And this also uh, slides up onto the barrel of your indicator and uh, tightens up and then uh, this hole attachment gets in there and you can indicate off the inside of that bore. So they both won't fit into the same area there. The good news is, I guess ironically, uh, the other day I, uh, when I posted my video showing this uh, uh, new this Noga indicator base and showing you different kind of indicator bases I had, I got a, uh, a, a message from uh, Adam, uh, ABOM78, I, I, I can't remember his uh, exact login, I'll try to put it up on the screen uh, so you can uh, uh, to go look for him if you want to, but I, I've actually been watching some of Adam's videos and, and he's done a real good job. In fact, he's one of the many guys that I've seen using these Noga indicator bases and uh, where I really kind of got the, the, the bug to get one. Uh, he's one of the guys that I saw do that. Well, as it turned out the other day when I posted my video, I think the same day or maybe the very next day, Adam also posted an in-depth review talking about these Noga indicator bases and he compared several different ones. Very nice little, uh, it was a fairly short but very informative video that he did a very good job on. But in that video, uh, he showed a little trick that he uses where instead of, of using the barrel of the indicator, he makes a little uh, lug that goes on the back, this 3 8 inch stem sticking out that just uh, goes into the, the, the regular base here. Uh, on, on your indicator. And I said, man, that's a really neat idea. In fact, I, I sent him a message and said, I really like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make one. Uh, and uh, my, my plan was, was uh, this week, while I had some time to shop, I was gonna make one of those. And uh, then today I come over and I need the indicator and I got it out and I said, dang, I forgot to make that, uh, that little lug. So, so now I'm to the point where I'm gonna have to make a lug before I can go back over here and uh, finish this job that I, that I have actually got started. So I put my four jaw chuck on, I got the part kind of in there, <coughs> running somewhat true, uh, needing to be indicated. And uh, now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the uh, four jaw chuck off, put the three jaw chuck back on, make my indicator base or my lug to go on my indicator so that I can use this properly. So while I got a video going, uh, I think I'll show a little bit about changing out the chucks on, uh, on the lathe here, uh, so you can see that uh, and see how I do it. What you see here is my, the backside of uh, one of my chucks that goes on this Lodge and Shipley lathe. And uh, a lot of lathes have a threaded um, nose piece on the lathe and you just, you just thread the back plate of the, lathe, of the chuck up onto the lathe. In fact, uh, particularly smaller lathes, that's, that's a very common way of doing it. And it works great. Um, one of the downsides to using a threaded uh, chuck though is, is that if you're ever turning in reverse, you can actually unscrew the chuck and the chuck can screw off if you don't have it 
uh, tightened onto the machine. So on this Lodge and Shipley lathe, uh, and you see this on a lot, a lot of larger lathes as well, instead of using a, a, a threaded screw, it has this cam lock system in here. So on this particular one, there's six studs that go up uh, inside the lathe. Each one of them have a little notch in them. And on the lathe, uh, there's a, a cam piece that goes in there and locks that in there and just pulls the chuck tied up onto the nose piece on the lathe. And it actually registers on the inside here and into a, a part that it, it just fits right up onto. And those cams will just tighten it and pull it into place. So. We're going to pull the four jaw chuck off the lathe. Uh, I just put it on. In fact, I just took this chuck off a few minutes ago, so I'm undoing what I do, uh, which I've only got one lathe, so that's the price I pay. I really wish I had a little smaller uh, 10 or 12 inch lathe as a secondary machine that uh, when things like this come up, and also for doing smaller, more precision work, but I'm stuck with what I have, at least for now. So I've got you uh, zoomed in on the back of the chuck now, and you can see on here, uh, as you go around, there's, there's six uh, little square screws in there that, that, that it goes to the cam uh, that attaches to those uh, lugs I was showing you a minute ago. Uh, I don't know if it'll show up on the video or not, but there's a mark on each one of them at the bottom or wherever it is, and there's a mark here at the top. And what you have to do is you have to turn this around and get those two marks lined up and that is where the chuck will come off. So uh, to do this, I just use a, a half inch drive socket, which fits down in there. There was probably at one time a tool that uh, was made for this lathe to do this, but it's long since gone. So I just use the socket, um, but we'll turn that around and line those up on all six of them. All right, now comes the fun part. We have to get this big heavy chuck off the lathe uh, and then swap them out. And this is where, uh, <laughs> when I first started using this lathe, uh, it, when I had to change chucks, it was a really a chore uh, because a lot of times I'm up here, usually I'm up here on Saturdays, I'm by myself, I don't have any help. Uh, I have lamented before about, uh, in videos, about not having a crane in here. I really would give my right arm to have a crane in the shop here, but uh, unfortunately, the way the shop is built, I don't know that we'll, we'll ever get a crane in here. Um, maybe we'll figure something out one day. But I, I had a hard time, particularly with four dog chuck, because it's just way too big and heavy for me to handle by myself. So uh, you've heard of a bridge crane before. Uh, I've I kind of resorted to uh, using a bridge instead uh, to get this off. So so the way this works is is if you look in my shop, I have the lathe over here and over on this side I have a table and I, I figured out that I can keep my chucks uh, stored up here on this table and uh, I would just use a bridge to get across so let me grab my bridge uh, here's my bridge that's just a piece of lumber I think that's a piece of sweet gum actually that uh, was laying around out here at the museum, came off the museum steam-powered sawmill at some point in time, and I grabbed it, commandeered it, and this is what I use uh, to get across here. So uh, we'll take this board here, and uh, I'm just going to slide it up underneath the chuck, and uh, I can, I'm using wood, and I'm on my ways. Uh, the wood's not going to hurt the ways, but I can use this as a lever and just press up on there and slide that chuck right off. Once I get it out, I can just roll it, get it up onto my bridge, and roll it right over here to the table out of the way.
and we just keep it stored over there and uh it's uh you know after i've done this i don't know how many times now it's really gotten quite simple i can change these out by myself without much trouble at all um so in lieu of a crane in lieu of a bridge crane we just use a bridge out here now that we have the uh the chuck off you can see the spindle itself here and uh, you see the different holes in here and if you, it, again there's just a little cam piece in there that when you tighten this up it uh it tightens the, uh, a little round lug uh it's only a half round so right now you can slide the piece in but as you turn it it cams and tightens that up and it will pull it pull it up snug to the back of this faceplate and uh, this little nose piece here actually registers into the inside of that chuck and that's what aligns it is going up on this piece here and then of course going flat up against the back piece here and that's how uh, it gets uh, lined up on there. The, the studs are just strictly to, to pull backwards pressure uh, to hold in place. So anytime you're changing out chucks, of course, you need to take a, a minute or two and wipe everything down real good. Uh, make sure it's perfectly clean, that there's not any uh, trash on here. Um, I, I try to use a rag for this instead of just hitting it with air. Uh, the rag's going to do a much better job of getting everything cleaned up on it. And even though I'm, I'm not against using uh, compressed air on my lathe, I, I really try to keep it to a minimum because with compressed air you can blow chips up into places they don't need to be. And uh, so I, I try to reserve my air, not for necessarily cleaning, but for when I need to, need a, just a quick blast somewhere. So now that we've got the, uh, the nose ready to receive the chuck, I need to get my chuck ready as well and get it cleaned up and wiped up. So here's the bigger four jaw chuck I just pulled off. Here's my little uh, smaller chuck that I'm going to put on. So again, I'm just going to take my rag and get in here and uh, I can actually see some chips in there. Um, and I'm just going to take it and wipe everything down. Um, the main areas I'm, I'm working on is uh, this little taper right here that goes up on that nose as well as this flat on the back uh, that's going to go up tight against there. You want to make sure that's perfectly clean. And uh, I think that looks good right there. So to put the small chuck on, um, I'm not going it, to, it's small enough that I can just manhandle, so I'm not going to uh, pull the crane back out for that. I'll just pick it up, carry it over here, and we'll just put it right back on there. And then uh, just reverse the procedure we used a while ago to loosen it. I'll take my socket set here and I will tighten that up. And then hopefully you saw that snug up on that first one. It just pulled tight. Uh, when I'm tightening these, uh, I tend to, there's six of them all together. So I'll, I'll do one, I'll skip one. I'll go uh, 180 degrees out or 120 degrees out do the next one and then do the, the third one. And then I'll go back and do the ones in between. And then I'll finish up by just checking each one of them. Just to make sure everything's snug. Before I get started on this, I did a real quick uh, cartoon sketch of what I'm making, of course, not to scale, but uh, so I'm going to have a 3 8 inch lug that's 5 8 inch long here. That'll be the part that goes up in the Noga base. This is be a quarter inch 20 uh, threaded, um, and that will allow me to uh, go through the, the boss on the back of the indicator, and we'll put a nut on there to tighten it up, and I'll just have the stud sticking out. So that's what we're after. We're set up on the lathe now to get ready to start with this. This is just a piece of half inch stock. Uh, that's just a piece of, that I have laying around. I think that's some hot roll. Uh, so we're just gonna make this out of that. Uh, we'll start by just putting a face cut on the end. Clean up that rough cut off the band saw. We'll come in here. Let's see, the total length on that is going to be about an uh, inch and an eighth. I 
think I'm going to choke up on this a little bit. I got a little bit too much sticking out. All right, let's do this again. Come in here. I want an inch and an eighth. So that's about an inch and an eighth. I'm just going to uh, come in here and, and make a witness mark so I'll know where to turn to. Since I did change that in the tuck, I'm going to reface this in. I see a little bit more run out on it than I had a minute ago. So, okay, we're coming here. Touch off. And uh, we'll make a light cut to start out with here. I was spreading on the lathe a minute ago, and I didn't have my uh, feed engaged. Let me, uh, all right. Maybe now. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to turn this down to 3 8 That could be the size that goes up into the uh, back of the indicator. Let's uh, try this. That'll go on there, but that is a little bit snug for my liking. See where we're at. I'm making real light passes here guys um, I know my lathe will take off a lot more but when you're dealing with small stock like this you get a lot of flex so I got about a hundred thousandths to go so we're just going to sneak up on that with a couple of passes here all right if I've been Doing the math in my head right, I should be just a little over 20 thousandths to cut. And it looks like it's about... Ah, hard to get these calipers on here. I probably have to get my mic. Well, it looks like I wasn't keeping up with it. I was taking 20 thousandths cuts and looks like I'm right dead on nuts here. That's going to be just fine, though. So. All right, we're going to put a thread on that now. So let me get my threading tool and get it ready to go. All right, I've got my... I swapped out uh, turning tools. I put my one in here with my uh, threading tool in there. I actually had to swap that tip out. I had a coarser... Uh, pitch on there. Earlier today I was making some uh, 5 8 inch 11 square head bolts. So um, anyway, we uh, swapped that out. We're just going to, I've got the machine set up for 20 threads per inch. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this. Uh, come in and I usually like to start by just cutting a, using the front edge of my tool to put a chamfer on the end, the same angle as the threads. Alright, we're going to thread it to about right in there. I'll give me a little bit of a shoulder to uh, go up on that indicator. And I'll touch off. Set my cross slide scale here to zero. That looks perfect.
Now, and I got it pretty close. And uh, just to finish it off, I'm just going to run a, a die up on here. A little trick I use quite often just to finish up threads. It's hard to get a die started straight a lot of times, and it's hard, particularly on larger diameter stuff, to get a a good clean cut or a, an easy cut. But once you get those threads started on the lathe, it's real easy to stick that die up on there and just get it down to the exact dimension without having to worry about uh, test fitting and all that. Just a little shortcut that I've learned. Just about done. Final thing here is we will uh, part it off. Alright, we got our parting tool in here. And uh, okay, let's uh, speed that lathe up. And we're just going to part this off now. So there's the uh, finished part and my <laughs> pretty bad drawing when you look at it in scale, but gets the point across. And uh, we're gonna try this out on my, my indicator and my Noga base and see how it works. All right, so there it is. My little mounting stud uh, mounted on my indicator. And that's a little 3 8 cent shank will go right up into my Noga holder now. I tighten that up. And I think we've just made a very uh, vast improvement to this already really nice uh, indicator. So, um, Adam, uh, thank you for the tip. Uh, I like it. Uh, you ought to patent that and sell it to Noga. Uh, who knows? You might get rich at 97 cents a piece or something. Ah, very nice. Uh, again, thank you, Adam. And here's the Noga in action so you just loosen that up and you got a lot of versatility if I wanted to come in here and indicate off this chuck just tighten it down and got a very nice uh, surface now that I can indicate off of. Of course I put it right there in the way. No problem we'll just move it over. Let's see a little bit more right there. I think that run out you're seeing there is just a little bit of trash on my surface of my chuck. So, very good. Um, I think I'm going to like the Noga. Before we wrap this video up, I did want to show you guys the, the whole attachment uh, for on here uh, for this indicator in case you've never seen one. Uh, this is a Sterrett, um, let's see, 670B slash 645F uh, hole attachment for a um, for one of these Sterrett uh, indicators. 
And again, it just fits on the end and the hole goes in there and, and lets you indicate off of this. And I've been using that to get this, uh, this uh, bearing block uh, lined up on the, the lathe. And this probably isn't the best example to show you how to use it because the inside bore on this is a rough finish. Uh, it was originally a cast iron bearing running on a steel shaft, running real slow. And when we took it out of the machine, it had just been so rusted and pitted in there that the inside surface inside of here is number one, very rough, and number two is not worn uh, perfectly round. So uh, we've got a good bit of uh, variability in there and it is kind of rough. But as you can see, just to kind of show you how this works, that goes up in there and as it goes around, you can see it moving back and forth. I'm actually pretty tickled here. I've got this uh, running within about 30 thousandths, um, maybe a little bit more than that, eh, about 30 thousandths total run out. Uh, but considering that's a rough bore, uh, as well as being pitted and, and worn out of round, I, I did kind of play around with my snap gauges. And it's, there's a lot of variability depending on the angle be, that you measure because the pressure was pushing on one side of this, so it's worn. Uh, kind of egg-shaped inside the bore. So anyway, we've got this set up on the lathe now, and I'm not going to bore this out, and we're going to re-sleeve these with bronze uh, to get them running true again.